Hey friends, what's up? Cons here. Welcome back to another server adventure, otherwise known as Bucket Spigot plug-in tutorials. This week I'm going over Mythic Mobs. Sorry I missed last week. Been kind of a crazy last week. Switch jobs. And uh, the one I wanted to do, statues last week, doesn't work in 1.8. Doesn't look like there's going to be any updates for that. And Mythic Mobs, which is today, is huge. Mythic Mobs is um, super complex. So it's going to take a while for you guys to get this set up on your server how you want it to do, but hopefully this helps you get started. The wiki that the author created is fantastic. Uh, the author is Zcage, maybe? Maybe I'm pronouncing that right? And uh, this was requested by Moshi Monster 86 and the Baconator Piggies. So thank you guys for suggesting this. If you have a suggestion of a plugin you'd like me to do and review, comment that in the jibbles below. Keep in mind, I have a quite large backlog. I think Archon Crates is going to be next if this schedule thing is up. I think maybe I have one more. I'm not sure off the top of my head. I'm sure it'll be here. Yeah, anyway. So this gives you full control of the mobs on your server. You can modify the behavior of the vanilla mobs as well as create your own custom mobs. It integrates with Quest. If you have the Quest, Quest uh, plugin and then the supporting plugin, which I'll probably do Quest eventually, um, it's going to be a while, but you can create custom mobs. It's really cool. You can modify their skills, attributes, special effects, equipment, damage modifiers, mob spawners. You can set your own spawning conditions. You can do global spawning conditions. You can set them in factions so you can have mobs that are going to fight against each other. If you use uh, you can disguise them, but you need to get lib disguises and protocol lib, both the two latest ones if you want this to run on 1.86 or above, which this tutorial is 1.86. And yeah, it's fantastic. So let's take a look at some of the stuff you can do in-game. Most of the configuration for adding custom mobs, items, stuff like that is going to be done in the configuration, uh, the YML file, so you're going to want to have Notepad++ probably. But anyway, you're just going to do slash MM, which is um, Mythic Mobs, and then you could do MM Mobs and see all the commands that you have with the mobs. And so we can do MM Mob List, and we can see all of the mobs that we have. We can do MM Mob, um, let's spawn the uh, Skeletal, actually this is all caps case sensitive, so Skeletal till night and if we do that it's uh we're gonna spawn one of them it's gonna spawn right where we are we can also put world uh and then the xyz if we want to spawn them somewhere else so if we want we do zero seventy one zero so that's gonna spawn them uh right over there and we don't want to get killed by it so we're gonna do mm mobs kill you could specify the mob name or you could just do kill all and then it's gonna remove them so that's really cool. That one's really easy. So let's go see what else we got. We got MM eggs. So we can do MM E give player name skeletal knight one. So that's given me one mob and we can spawn them, which they're going to destroy me. So let's get rid of them real quick. So you can give people eggs, which is really cool. You could put that in your donations plugin or, or points plugin, whatever it is, and then they can run that command when they purchase it or, or whatever you want. So we can do MM items as well, or MMI, and that's gonna pull up the items list. So we can do MMI list. That's gonna show all the custom items that are in here. This is all default. I'll show you guys how to modify this and add stuff to it in a few here. So we can do MM items. Uh, get skeleton king sword. So that's going to give us a sword, which actually has a modifier of making us go a little bit faster, as well as giving us more more health. So we're going to also do the king's crown, and then the bandit tunic. Bandit tunic. So the king's crown is actually also gives us more more health, and then the bandit tunic. This is interesting. What does this one do? Uh, I don't think it really does anything. 
we're just going to put that back. So there we go. Uh, the sword makes us a little bit faster, gives us sharpness 5, knockback 2, fire aspect 2, 10% uh, max speed, and 10% max health, which is really cool. Here's the crown, a bunch of other stuff, 100% knockback, 1000% knockback resisted, so we don't get knocked back. That's pretty cool. All right, let's take a look at the next thing, which I think is the spawner. So we're going to go MMS, and then we're going to take a look at those. So we want to do MMS, create... And like the the guide is amazing for this, um, which is great because there's gonna be a lot of stuff that I'm not really gonna cover because it's just a bunch of lists of different things that you can do. So I highly recommend you check that out. Link will be in the jibbles. That would be the description box for you new people. So then we're gonna do create, um, and then we're just gonna call it Skelly King, and then we're gonna do the Skeleton King. I think what's his name again? B -b 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 there he is, Skeleton. Tin King. So that's gonna, uh, whoop, did I, uh, I spelt it wrong probably. Let's take a look. Yes, I did. I, there we go. So that's gonna create a spawner there and he's going to spawn. So this is really cool. You can group these actually. You see he's got the name there. We can do MMS. There's a whole lot of stuff. You can do info, uh, Skell King, right? Once again, it is case sensitive. Um, so we forgot that one. So we're gonna do MM spawners list near, and then there we go, Skelly King. Oh, there's an E. So now it's gonna show you all the information which you can modify all of this stuff in here. You can limit, set the limit on the spawn by adding a condition. You could set different conditions. There's a list of things that you can modify for these spawners, which is great. You can actually group them together so you can have multiple spawners that have the same cooldown. So if you have like a dungeon or something, they have the same kind of setting. You don't have to set each individual spawner, which is great. And then I think that's about it. We got the MM test. There's a bunch of test stuff in here. You can test different effects and skills that you've created, that kind of stuff. Uh, there's MM utility area or MMU. Um, which has a lot of stuff you can get the block coordinates. Yeah, you can list items, register, print void list, all that stuff. You can also do the MM reload and then MM debug. So one thing that you could do in here, which is great, is you can set this to one and then now we will see that. So we can see where all the spawners are. If we set that back to zero, we're not gonna really, we're not gonna see those. That's really cool. If you're creating a dungeon, you wanna see where all those spawners are, that's fantastic. Let's hop over to config file and take a look at what else, you know, how we can set all this stuff up. Okay, so here we are. We got our mythic mobs. We got our protocol lib and lib disguises all updated today or at least in the next last few days. So we're gonna go into mythic mobs and then we can open up the config file. I'm really not gonna hit a bunch of stuff in here because it's all pretty straightforward. A couple things to highlight is the compatibility mode. If you're having trouble with something like mob arena or anything else that has uh, modifies mobs or anything, set that to true and see if that helps out um, with any con conflicts. Like I said, you can also set the debug level in here, but you can do that in the game. Uh, it goes zero to four, one being the one where at least you can see where the spawners are, and then the other levels have just more information. Number four has got tons of information. Might not really need it, but maybe if you're having some trouble, bump that up to two and see what happens. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. You could kind of modify how everything is shown in here. I'm not really going to hit it. There is a page on the wiki that the authors created that has all of these items that you could put in here, which is really cool. All right, so let's go back in. Let's talk about the drop tables. So we're gonna open this up. Now this is going to reference a specific mob. So we got the Skeleton King drops and he's gonna drop the King's Crown, which is an item that's created, which we'll show you that in a second. And he has a 1% chance of dropping it. And then the item is actually this, or then he also will can drop this, which is an item in there. He'll drop 100 XP. And then it, this actually will reference other plugins. If you have other plugins, you can do crates, you know, loot crates, crates uh, reloaded or anything like that. And it will run that and it'll drop, you know, the hero's XP, um, that stuff. Basically it's the name, 
the amount so if you don't specify the amount the default is one i believe and then the chance that it's going to happen so this is going to be dropping between 32 and 64 and it's a one percent chance so this must be some sort of item i don't know it off the top of my head um yeah so that's pretty cool let's hop over let's uh continue going on let's look at the items and we can look at that. So here's where you can define your custom items. The name is here, it's gotta be unique. The ID is going to be the item number that it is. So, and this also works with colon and then a modifier. So if you want like Red Bull or, or whatever in here, um, actually that would be the data. You set the data in there. So you don't do colon. So if you're trying to do an item that is something colon whatever, you're gonna put this whatever's after the colon in here and then the display is the name and then the lore and then here's the enchantments there's a whole list in the website i'll try to remember to put a, a direct link otherwise you can find it in the wiki of all the enchantments that you can put on that item and then you have other options now the options list is crazy it's huge you can um do a bunch of stuff now taking a step back if you try to add an enchant enchantment to something that's not supposed to be enchanted like that it's going to break the item so if you try to add breathe you know underwater breathing to a sword it's going to break that item and you're not going to be able to use it um the options list is huge once again check the website it's a long list i'm not really going to hit all of that stuff this is the plus 10 health and then the 10 percent bump in the speed okay let's hop over to the mobs which is huge so we can do example mobs and you can also modify how the vanilla mobs spawn so you're going to have um the the name of them which check the wiki he has a list of all the the vanilla mobs that you can modify and the stuff that they will do which is really cool so i think he's got he added the giant one in here so you can have giants spawning in your vanilla vanilla survival world which is really cool so here's the name of the mob once again and then the type which the type is the list um there'll be a link in the jibbles you can also um yeah so drops pretty straightforward this is the type of drop the number and then the percent if you're going to have multiple drops try to kind of space those out so if you want each item to be a five percent chance this is actually a 50 percent chance and then here's your level modifiers. So if you want to just, you know, keep your mobs spawning up and it's a level two skeleton knight, then he's gonna have a plus five of health and then a damage modifier 50% over what he had previously from this. So it's a way that you can just continue making your levels up. Your options, you can add a lot of different options in here. One of them will be, you can prevent mob kill drops. So if they're killing other mobs, or, or other mobs killed in i'm not sure which way it is so might want to test that out real quick they won't drop any items so if you're going to set mobs to attack each other be sure to put prevent mob kill drops in here otherwise you're going to have you're going to start lagging because there's going to be so many entities from mobs killing each other and then you can put the disguise in here so if you want to disguise a wither skeleton as a sheep you can do that and then they'll have a sword or the, they use the example of disguising iron golems as villagers to be like a city guard that attacks other other uh, mobs which is really cool you also have a skills area which is huge there's a whole lot of skills i'm not really going to hit on them go check out the list and they'll explain each one of the skills and then you can just kind of add them to that here's some more options you can send a message and it's going to send it yeah i'm not really going to go over all this guys it's super in-depth you guys have to just kind of look over the website um it's fantastic very well done i would highly recommend it this one you can specify the equipment that they have so you can give a villager a sword that's disguised as an iron golem that kind of stuff in there so here's your random spawns which is going to randomly spawn that that this mob in this world Here's all the skills that we have, or if you want to do custom skills rather than the ones that are in the default, you can modify those in there. Uh, this plugin is super powerful and it's super in depth. I don't have time to really go into it a lot. You can also modify any of the spawns that you already have created in there. They will show up. If you don't have any created, they won't show up in here. So if you don't want to do those in game, you can do those 
in the config file. So hopefully that helps you guys get started. This is only just to get you guys started. Let's hop back into the game and wrap it up. Okay guys, this was just to help you guys get started. This plugin is super powerful, super complex, but you can make a really cool RPG server or just a custom dungeon crawler on your server, whatever it is you want. It's going to take you some time and some work to get it going, a lot of trial and error, but that's kind of how it is with running a server. It takes work, takes time, takes a lot of learning trial and error. I've been doing this for three years. Um, everything I've done is trial and error and it's usually taken me a while to figure out anything. So hopefully this, this cuts down your, your startup time a little bit and you guys get to understand. I'd just highly recommend that you review the wiki. The author put together a great resource for you guys to get started. Um, shout out to that. There's, that a lot of plugin authors don't have good uh, references on how to run their plugins. So Hopefully that helps. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, ask a question. I'll do my best to answer it, but I'm probably not going to be too much assistance. I highly recommend just posting on the author's page. This is Kaz from McFriends reminding you guys all, enjoy the game. God bless.